Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and I am here today to make a card based upon a challenge that was sent out on Instagram. I hope you'll stick around, find out about the challenge and see what I make. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. The other day on Instagram, Dawn McVeigh, who is at Dawn Singh, posted a challenge on her account. She gave you a few different pictures and you were to make anything crafty based upon one of those pictures. Well, I am here to go ahead and use her inspiration and create a card. Here on the screen, you can see the original post and there's a little bit of information. And then this is going to be the picture that I'm gonna be taking inspiration from. What I'm inspired by is that wood panel background and all of those frames. In front of me are some of the supplies that I plan on using for this card. If I do add anything later, I will let you know what that is. But as always, when I go to a voiceover, if I leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. To go along with the frame theme, I'm going to be using a couple dies that I got in the March 2018 Spellbinders Small Die of the Month kit. These you can either just use separately or you can put them together to make a frame. I will also be using these little gold frame die cuts. My sister has this set from Tailored Expressions and she cut me out a whole bunch of these a couple years ago and now I finally get to use them. The set that these came from is called Sitting Pretty, I believe. I will see if I can find this and link it in the description box below. For my sentiment, I will be using this reverse confetti set. It is called The Most Beauty, and the sentiment I'm choosing to use is, I am so happy that we are friends. I will be stamping that in Gina K Designs, Peach Bellini ink, and I will also be using this ink spot for some inking on my card. For the paper for my card, because of that wood grain background, and you've seen me do this a couple times, I'm going to be making a wood plank look background using this piece here. It's hard to see on camera, but in the background, in this open area, is a very light peachy wood grain. So I will be using that for my planks. This is from the Recollections Peachy Evergreen Paper Pad. Let's get crafty! I started by cutting a piece of this pattern paper that was five and a half inches wide. Later, I will only need strips that are five inches tall, but I decided that I can always cut it down. I really can't add paper on. What I did was starting from the right, I moved my paper over a half inch at a time and cut my little wood panels. I ended up cutting about 10, I think, even though I only need eight. Now I cut a piece of just scrap cardstock to build my wood floor on, and that is four by five and a quarter. This gold piece of cardstock, I cut down to four and an eighth by five and three eighths, and then I decided that I wanted a little something to put behind these in the card, so I got another piece of pattern paper out of that pad and cut the stripes only to be four and a quarter by five and a half. Later, I realized you really can't even see this, but I did go ahead and add it to the card. Once I had the majority of the cutting done, it was time to start building my wood panel background. The first thing I did was use that Peach Bellini ink to ink the edges of each of my planks. Off camera, I ran that piece of white cardstock through my Xyron. This just puts a nice sheet of adhesive all the way on one side of the cardstock. And this is going to be the base for my wood plank background. The first thing I do is take my first plank and place it about a third of the way down on that left side. 
I cut off the extra and then flip that piece around and butt it up against the first piece, making sure that the two inked edges go together. I place the next plank a third of the way from the bottom and then do the same. I flip the extra around and butt it up against that first piece. That third row is just going to be a complete plank all the way across the five and a quarter inches. I continue the same pattern until I fill up that piece of white cardstock completely. Once all of those are placed, I cut off all the extra ends from the card and then I got that ink spot back out and inked around all of the edges because I did cut some of that off when I was trimming my planks. To hold my dies together, I got out my Scotch Blue removable tape. I like to use this for die cutting because I can reuse these pieces over and over and it does not tear up or lift any pattern off the paper. I started by cutting a frame from the center of the gold cardstock piece and that is because you won't see that so I don't have to waste another scrap or another piece of cardstock to make this frame. Off camera, I cut and folded a heavyweight white card base. The next thing I'm going to do is place the peach striped paper on top of that. It does fill the entire card front. Then I mat my wood plank background piece with that gold cardstock. This next part was probably the trickiest part of the entire card. I needed to get those tiny frames adhered onto my plank background. I started by trying to place them on the card front where I thought I might like them, but because they did kind of have some curvature to them, you'll notice that the final layout was a little bit wonky. Next, I got out my Glad Press and Seal. This is a very low tack roll of adhesive sheets. What I do is grab a piece of that and then press it down carefully over my little frames. This allows me to pull the frames up and leave them where I have them laid out on the card front. You do notice that I do kind of change the placement. I try to straighten the frames out a little bit and then I'm gonna start putting my adhesive on those. For Christmas, I got some art glitter glue, and this was my first time using it, and that's probably why I didn't do the best job. But I do want you to notice this beautiful bottle stopper. I bought this from Debbie Vignola, and it comes with this really tiny pin, and I knew that if I didn't get something that I could find, that I would lose that within five seconds. So I will link her video below where she shows you some of the charms she has made. I hope you'll go check those out if you have one of these fine tip glue bottles. Speaking of fine tip glue bottles, if you already use art glitter glue, you can probably see where I totally went wrong here. I was using this thinking, what's the hype about this fine tip glue? Because it was just coming out all over the place. It was later that I discovered the metal fine tip that you're supposed to put on the bottle. And then that beautiful beaded charm that I bought from Debbie actually fits in there nice and tightly and doesn't fall out. So just a heads up for those of you who are considering getting this, make sure to get that metal tip out of your package and use it. Once I had adhesive on the back of all of the little frames, I flipped my piece of press and seal over and then carefully peeled it back, trying my best to leave the frames behind. You did see there that a couple frames wanted to lift up and I just put the press and seal back, kind of re-rubbed on that area and then pulled it off. And because I'm using liquid glue, I was able to move those just a little bit before I set that aside to dry. The next step for my card was to do the stamping. I inked up my sentiment with the peach bellini and I did stamp it a couple times just in case one looked a little bit better than the other. Then I pulled out the larger die from the frames I cut before and cut out that sentiment. This will get adhered behind the gold frame 
And now you can see I figured out my art glitter glue. It is just giving me a nice fine strip of glue now. Once I place those two pieces together, I set those to the side to dry. This was when I noticed the black spot on my card front. If this ever happens to you, I would suggest getting one of these mono sand erasers. If you just sand lightly, stuff like that comes right up. I am using my foam tape roll to put that piece onto my card front. I just wanted a little dimension since this is a pretty clean and simple looking card. Once I figured out where I wanted my sentiment frame to go, I used that same foam tape to adhere this kind of to the left center on that card. At this point, I wanted to pull in the peach color a little more, so I got out some light kind of peachy orange colored gems and placed five of those on the card front. And here is a close up look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made this card that was inspired by Don McVeigh on Instagram. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to check out my Instagram account, I do have my name, which is at callmecraftyal, linked in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.